Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Oh, so on the next step is uh, downloading your software. We already looked at the uh, the note to use uh, 4.0.4.31. And I went to this URL, and it's right here. And it says download Windows download. So, you know, you click on it, and as you can see, at least when I'm making this video, it's using build 4, 431. Uh, but if you scroll down, you can see the system requirements is uh, Windows 8 or 10. <laughs> and I have Windows 7. Okay, so I uh, I was poking around and I I clicked on this uh, this carbon carbide motion V3, and right here you can see it says carbide motion V3 for Windows 7, 8, and 10 build uh, 368. So, like I said, I I'm running Windows 7. If you're running Windows 7, I don't know. We might have a problem because we have to run Windows. It says it's for Windows 8 or 10. Maybe they just didn't put it in the manual. I, I don't know. But it's but we need it. If you're running the Z+, Plus, we need <laughs> Windows. I mean, uh, Carbide Motion 4.0.431. All right, because it's got going to have the Z Plus stuff in it. You know, you just click on this and download it. I'm not going to bore you with that. You've done that a million times. Going to the next step, and it says, uh, after installing Carbide Create 4, you will need to upload the settings and initialize the homing sequences for the, or say Poco, the, the homing sequence sets home for the machine, which is starting reference point for every job. Well, see, I wasn't actually going to use Carbide Create because I'm going to be using Fusion 360 for my projects, which if you've seen my other videos, you know I've already designed lots of faceplates <laughs> using uh, Fusion 360. But um, yeah, so I, I said, okay, well, we need to, you know, if we need it for running, for setting the, the homing sequences. So I went back and clicked on and put in this URL and clicked on download. And now they're, um, they, they, they sent a link to download the software in my email. So now I'm sitting here waiting for my email. So I guess I'll just drink some coffee and wait for them to send me an email. Okay, so I've been waiting about <laughs> five minutes or so. Uh, well, maybe a little longer. I didn't actually look at the clock, but uh, yeah. So since I'm bored and have nothing else to do, I figured I'd email Carbide Support, ask him where my links are. Uh, let's see how fast their, their response is. Okay, well, while we're waiting for the uh, download links, I was kind of reading forward, or uh, reading ahead, and it looks like we could probably do a couple more things before we get back to the uh, needing the carbide create. Carbide create. Uh, okay, so the next step is connect to the carbide motion four, turn on the computer, connect to USB cable, start carbide motion four. If you haven't already, that should be installed. Flip the inline rocker switch on, which we did in a previous step, and then connect to the cutter. Okay. I'm going to go plug in our, our USB cable that I showed you earlier, and I'll be right back. Okay, and if, if you're not familiar with USB cables, I know a lot of times I, uh, I take it for granted. Uh, but if you're not, the, uh, the square end, or the kind of square end right here, uh, goes in the carbide, uh, I'm sorry, the Shapeoko uh, controller, and the rectangle side right here goes into the computer, USB port. And it doesn't matter which one. I don't know if it, if there's, there's different versions of USBs, but it doesn't say USB 3 or 2. I, I think it's probably, this thing is probably, uh, so slow it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're gonna take the, I should call it a squarish uh, end, and it goes right here. All right, plug it in until it stops. And then on the computer, plug it in to a USB port. And you heard my Windows computer beep. That should be good. Shapeoko 3, COM34 device driver. Software installed successfully. Excellent. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I think when I did my 3D printer, that didn't work so well. 
what's next on the list here. Okay, so I double clicked on the, uh, the carbide motion icon on the desktop, and we're gonna click connect to router, or cutter, sorry. Initializing machine. Alrighty, I'll be back. I don't know how long this is gonna take. Okay, well, I get the sneaky suspicion <laughs> this isn't this isn't really working. I, I don't know. I it might be trying to upload software into the uh, controller, and I'm I'm worried if I unplug it, it's gonna booger it up. Uh, I'm gonna give it a few more minutes, and uh, maybe I'll poke around on the internet uh, to see if. It's just stuck. My first thought is it can't communicate with the Shape Oko, uh, the controller on the Shape Oko, and and it's probably there's probably a sequence you need to, you know, plug in the USB with the software running or something like that. Even though I followed their steps, oh, turn on your computer. That's a very helpful step. Yeah. So it says previously to. Oh, okay. Maybe I did get it out of sequence. See, it says so. <laughs> <laughs> These steps, I'm telling you. So, uh, yeah, previously, where is it? Right right up here. Flip the inline rocker switch on the power cord to, to the on position. You'll hear the motors begin to, in blue LED, blah, 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 visible through slit. Okay. It doesn't say anything about turning it back off, right? So I just assumed that it was okay. So I, I connect the USB cable to the back. All right, start carbide motion. Yep. And now it says flip on the... The power again to the and see I I bet you this software needs to be running before this happens, right? So it can detect it. So I'm going to uh, power this guy off. Okay. Oh well, there we go. Actually, see that that actually fixed it, right? I, I know that error looks bad, <laughs> but I I think we got it out of out of whack. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it back up. Okay, sorry for all the dust on the screen. Now I'm going to turn on the rocker switch. Ah, I heard a, I heard my computer do something. All right, recognize the USB. Okay, so now I'm going to connect to the cutter. Okay, well, that didn't seem to make any difference. All right, well, I'm going to let it sit for a bit, and uh, I'll go poke around on the internets. Maybe maybe we need to load a new file. I, I don't see that in the steps. It's got new steps, but let's see, upload. Yeah, so there's no changes to the uh, connect to carbide. That's what step we're on. Upload your settings and initialize. Okay, upload your shape ogre once you... Your screen reads job info. See, we haven't got there yet. It's supposed to look like, I don't know if you can't see it, that's a, that's a piss poor picture, isn't it? Anyway, we're, it's definitely not seeing this, right? So, oh, you know what? <laughs> I wonder I wonder if this is a Windows 7 problem. Uh, we might be, we might have a, might have a problem, Houston. Okay, so Carbide3D was kind enough to send me this email here. I'm like, well, I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> I thought I'd come down here and, and can't connect or jog. Anyway, that, that email was an automated response. It, uh, it didn't come, from, it came from an automated machine. I would assume the automated machine is also supposed to send me my links. Maybe not. I hope it's not a, a real person. That could take a long time. Okay, so for Windows, the drivers must be installed. This is by done by installing this. Uh, driver must be properly installed. The machine uh, must be connected with get to call a USB. Okay, the machine must be connected to power, power source. Okay, and the communications uh, software must be set to use a correct communication support. You may need to check a list of available ports, which ones are preset, and set to the correct speed. Well, we can check that. And then it has order matters, don't care, troubleshooting. Okay, if that doesn't work. Okay, so uh, uh, one of the things I did see, machine operating checklist, power up the computer, duh. Uh, connect the USB cable, okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect it. 
Okay. Uh, oh, so yeah, so I connected the USB cable. Okay, turn on power for the machine. Power supplies to light up. Yep, I heard. Oh, it's an Arduino. That's interesting. Turn on power for the machine. Motion light up. Yep. Uh, and install the fan should come on. Wait until a microcontroller boots up. Early versions would draw power of USB connection to run the Arduino, but this is no longer the case. And lights will flash first and steadily once booted up. Okay. Start the COM control program. It should launch a display window, which will allow one to connect to the machine. Open the connect to the machine. That's uh, kind of weird, but it doesn't say anything about their software. So anyway, so uh, I can go down here, go ahead and click on carbide motion, connect the cutter, initializing. I don't know, is there settings? Oh, interesting. Where are we at? So I, does it say click on settings somewhere? Did I miss it? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so I, I reread this, this whole thing. It just says connect to cutter. The next one it says once your screen reads job info, which we never saw. It just said initializing. Click the settings button. So we, we didn't get down this far and it's revised anyway. So we'll go over to the revised. And it says upload your settings, initialize and new proximity switches. Upload your shape out. Once your screen reads job info, click the settings button. Well, we never did see the job info. No, but I mean, they're showing the settings screen where we're at. Click the setup shape oco button. Figure A15. Okay. I mean, it looks like it's seeing it, right? Although it does show the it does show the Z axis to be the belt drive, but it might just need to be set up. Let's just follow along. Let's let's see. I I, I don't think it's going to work because it acts like it's not communicating to it. It is. It is getting. I, I get, I'm hoping it's getting this data straight from the controller, so it is communicating with it. I think. Um, I don't know why it says it's a belt drive. Uh, set up show, okay, in the dialog windows that opens, I'll click the settings button, in the top menu bar to open settings menu, okay. Set up shape oco button, okay, so let's do that. Okay, in the dialog window it opens, choose shape oco XXL from the size drop down list, Z plus uh, lead screw from shape oco Z axis drop down list, uh, figure. A16. So shape OCO 3 XXL and Z plus lead screw. Then click update configuration. Update configuration. Send in config. Okay, well that, <laughs> that finished uh, without any kind of fanfare. Just counted down and, and that's it. So uh, it doesn't say here. Okay, so we, we did the update shape poco configuration. Okay, the main one will let you know that it is sending configuration settings. See, figure, okay, when the configuration has finished sending, go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm going to open the log real quick. I'm, I'm very curious to see what's in this. It's actually doing something. All right. So, uh, yeah, these are these are commands that it's sending, and you can see it's, Looks like it's communicating. So, okay, I'm <laughs> not, that's kind of weird. It uses uh, HTML to do that, but hey, why not? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And back to our setup. So, okay, so uh, I'll just go to the next page. Okay, so um, I, did, I got an email back from support, and they said that... Um, to please accept our apologies. They started with closed. I guess the ticket's closed. It says this happens on some browser slash email server combinations. It should work to add question mark force to the end of the URL. And uh, if you're not familiar with HTML, that question mark, I believe, uh, is like an option. So like, it's like an argument to a, a function or something like that. You can see it right here. See the, they're just adding Force, so hope this helps. Please know, let us know if there's anything else. Well, we'll give that a shot and then we'll see if it's great, okay, or not good. But anyway, I'm not gonna bore you with it. I'm sure it's gonna work. Well, I guess we might as well just try it. Yeah, why not? Uh, carbide create, download. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, there. <laughs> it just, it bypassed the whole, 
the whole uh, email server all together. So I'm glad I showed you that. So yeah, that annoying little email thing you can get around with using the question mark force. And actually, we didn't need it. In the manual, it tells you to download both of them and, and to do the little test program. We didn't need it. So there you go. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.